and welcome to UWS Careers Cafe, run by the University of the West of Scotland Career Service and aimed at guiding you to a successful career journey. We will host a series of guests, including academics, alumni, students, industry experts, and more. I'm your host, Ona Ramsey, and today we have a fantastic episode lined up for you. I have my colleague, Nigel, as a co-host here. Hi, Nigel. I'm Nigel Royal. I'm one of the careers advisors at UWS. That's great. Uh, so in this podcast, we will look at work of the careers team and how we can make a real difference to your time at UWS, whether it's helping you to make the most of opportunities while here or thinking ahead to your future career. So we are delighted to have our uh, team leader, Dr. Stephen Watt, Careers and Employability Manager within the Student Services. Welcome, Stephen. Hi, Una, and hi, Nigel. Delighted to be here. I'm, I'm actually, before I start off, I'm really excited that we're doing a podcast. So I just want to get that right out in episode one. Uh, thanks for uh, organising this, Una and Nigel. Um, my name's Stephen. I am the Careers and Employability Manager. So I am the, the Head of Service here in the Career Service at UWS. Nice to see everyone. Thank you. Yeah. So what do we do? What does the careers team do at UWS? So can you tell us uh, who we are and what we do? Who we are and what we what do we do? Okay, so I, I'd probably like to start off with a why then. Why are why are we here? And I think it goes back to the basics here. Like that transition out of university is it can be difficult and it can be daunting. Um, and that sort of three four year period, maybe that you're at university, it's really a very small snapshot in time, isn't it? It's you know it goes by very quickly, and suddenly you're out there, you're having to look. What's my next step? What's what's my future going to look like? What, is it a postgraduate degree I'm going to go for? Um, what sort of jobs out there? So there's all sort of questions that students have. And I think if we remember maybe back to when we were students, we probably had the same same questions as well. You know, what what can I do? Uh, what do I want? Uh, what do I want to do? What's right for me? Um, and how do I get there? And how can I be successful in actually obtaining the positions that I want? And it's also thinking about what can I do while I'm at university that will help me get to where I want to be. So I think we know that all students feel differently about these things. They're all at different stages. There's different levels of confidence, different levels of motivation, actually, to even thinking about your future career. Um, and then you add in complexities like what's actually going on in the external world, uh, you know, the graduate labour market as such is changing all, all the time. You know, we've seen onset of AI automation that's really had a big effect on the types of jobs that we're doing and the effects on the, the way we're doing jobs and the way employers are recruiting. Employer demands are changing all the time, the different skills they're looking for, their expectations, their skills gaps, you know, what are the skills they're looking for now? How can I get that during my time at university? And then you add in things like COVID and the cost of living crisis and, you know, what, what effect are all these things having on, on graduate jobs? So really, students need to be prepared for this, don't they? they? They have to be prepared for that. They have to be ready for that transition. You don't want to leave it till you get to your final year and think, right, okay, what's going on? What do I do? How am I going to get there? So the earlier you can start thinking about this, the better. So we've got a big job to do here as a career service to help students not only understand about those things I was talking about there, about the labour market and what's out there and how to get a job, but actually understanding themselves. And I think that's the key. Um, ideally, it's something they start to do very early. And when they get to that point, they'll understand themselves a lot easier. And just kind of you thinking, well, how do we support students? I'm just going to go back to our, our own mission statement at, at the university uh, at, in our career service. And that's to empower our students to develop their potential and make confident, informed decisions about their future. And that's essentially what we're trying to do. We're trying to help our students develop themselves to be able to be successful in the future, for whatever that may be, and to be able to make decisions for themselves that is right for them. And that's, that's essentially why we're here. That's great. Um, excellent. So three of us are all qualified careers advisors. So when we do talks, we talk about um, when students are going to university, it's not only about the qualification, it's also about their employability skills, being ready for the labour market when they leave. And we want them to be successful, want our students to be successful and ready and do well. So that's why we do our job and we love it. So Nigel, can I uh, bring you in? So how do the careers team support students? So can you tell us and share us, uh, share with us actually uh, about what you do and which schools you work with, please, thank you. Yes, okay, so um, my, my job, I mean, basically we, we, we have a system of link advisors whereby 
the careers advisors link with particular academic disciplines. So I I, I link with um, the health students, health disciplines, and, and also I link with research students. So any support that we do within those programs, that we might, we might go in and give talks, we might go in and do workshops, um, you know, and join classes, provide information, we, we will do through, the, through these link advisors. Um, but also, you know, that's one part of our work is working with the academic discipline. So no doubt as a student, you know, any students that are listening into this, you, you, you will meet us in, in your classes at one time or another. Um, but also there's an, the aspect of, you know, individual choice of when they want to access the support as well. So things like career guidance and also standalone sessions that we run. So let's talk about career guidance, first of all. Now, the important thing there is to just to mention is that career guidance is, you know, it's confidential, it's impartial and it's centred on what you're looking for from uh, from the service. So whatever questions you have, whether it be about further study, whether it be about your career choices, or whether it be how to fill in an application for, form for a particular job, you know, we're there to support you with those things um, as and when you need it and you can book those appointments. Um, so the, the other sorts of things that, that perhaps I could say I get involved in, we, we do some, some, some extra things like uh, we, we run a volunteer award, for example. So that's to support students who are already out there volunteering um, to find out about volunteer opportunities and then get some recognition from the university. So if any students are volunteering, there's that opportunity for you. Um, we also do things like mentoring, which you, know, you might want to say a few words about in a minute or two. Um, things that I'm also interested in is things like sustainability and helping students think about sustainability in their in their career and how can they link with sustainability issues when they when they get out there in their careers. Um, so if that's something that concerns you, then you know the career service is on that, and we are thinking about that for you. Um, what's a sort of typical day for me? You know, I might spend some time. Um, I might be, you know, doing some guidance interviews, usually do those in the morning. They might be online or they might be in person on campus. Um, I might have some workshops arranged that will go and speak to students in class. Um, I might also be developing some resources or I might be um, speaking to employers or volunteer providers. Um, I might be um, actually having meetings with academic disciplines to think about how we can we can plan ahead to, to support students in those subjects. Um, so every day is different really in careers, isn't it, uh, Una? Is, we're, we're absolutely. Different. Um, yeah, absolutely. Now, every day is different. And yeah, thank you. That was really, really good, you know. So we have a picture of what career service and career advisors do. And so how do we contact them if someone, a student listens to us and then they want to get in touch, arrange a careers interview? What, What's the next step? Uh, the website's your first port of call there. Um, if you if you go onto our website now, that there's a you you will need to log into the website using your your um, three six five login, um, and you'll see at the top there is a, a there is a tab for appointments. If you look through that, you can you can pick the careers appointments, and then it will offer you either campus appointments or online appointments, and you can pick you know. A time and a, a a place or a mode of, of appointment that, that suits you so it couldn't really be easier once you're logged into the site i was going to say as well if you want to can access that easily as the student app as well that you can get through to our, our website quite easily from just tapping the tap there it'll take you through and i think the one of the beauties about um getting an appointment with a career service actually is that you can do it yourself in your own time you know we've, we've got a system where you can go onto the website and, and, and just book your own appointments when it's suitable which is i think is really useful absolutely so it's a self-referral uh you can just use the app or the website and book an appointment and also the website has tons of uh, different resources so while you're running cooking or even falling asleep you could be listening or uh, do different you know short videos and audio and master classes and things like that as well so you don't necessarily have to put a time aside uh, thinking that I'm going to do this that day you can be doing it embedded in every day in your life in your part-time jobs in your studies so these are all 
you know, here with us, sometimes we think it's something else, but actually it's right in front of us, isn't it? I think that's probably the key that we can offer access to career support in a variety of different ways to suit different lifestyles, to suit different, you know, people at different stages of their life and so on. I think, um, as Nigel said, you, that's a self-referral. If you want to come and speak to an advisor, there's that possibility. There's events you can book on, but we make a big effort to, but what's really important to us is deliver it at scale and get into the curriculum and speak to students there and deliver workshops within the curriculum. Uh, and that's really important. But as well as that, as you say, there's a the digital resources that you can tap into 24-7. And I think that's there's lots of stuff on there. You mentioned the videos and so on, but there's also, you know, career assessments on there. There's AI-driven CV software where you'll get feedback without having to see an advisor before you come and see us. There's AI-driven interview software on there as well. So there's lots of great resources within our digital um, or our digital resources within our website that you can get access to. So apart from our one-to-one -one meetings and uh, coming into your classes, doing different talks, we also have um, independent uh, events and sessions going on, so which you can just uh, book yourselves and attend. It's uh, quite regular. Most weeks we have something on. So go and have a nosy and book yourself for different sessions and equip yourself for that next skills and ex experience you need. We are also delighted to have my colleague Lindsay today and Lindsay is an uh, employer liaison and projects officer and she does a lot of amazing work with employers. Hi Lindsay, welcome. Hi Yuna. So um, can you tell us about what you do and why do you think students should uh, come and work with us or you know obviously beneficial to our students and but sometimes students don't know what kind of work you're doing? Thank you. So my role is Employer Liaison and Projects Officer within the careers team. I've worked within UWS for almost 10 years. I've worked across different departments. So I do have um, experience working across different um, areas within higher education, including student enterprise, employability, project management, research, inclusivity and diversity. So incorporating that experience has really helped um, in the role that I'm currently involved in. So I work with employers around events, including careers fairs and also the industry insight series that we run for students and recent graduates to find out about recruitment processes, a day in the life of a graduate working within an organisation. Um, so we deliver these online and we can deliver sessions in person as well on campus. And that includes a range of employers um, sharing their, their expertise or what it is that they're looking for from students and graduates applying. So the event side is, is one part of the role. And we also work with employers around vacancy advertising, which includes work placements, paid placements, internships, graduate programmes and graduate vacancies. And we also go along to networking events, so um, engaging with employers at events discussing opportunities to work with students and recent graduates, whether that be around projects um, or being an industry mentor to support a student. So the other part of the role is projects officer. So that involves working closely with programme leaders within the work-related and work-based learning modules. So we work with employers around projects or work placement agreements. So that involves a, a three-way partnership between the student the employer and the university. So that's for um, placements that students will undertake as part of their module accreditation. That's amazing. It sounds, uh, you know, so valuable. You are bringing opportunities to students and also our careers advisors are working with them one-to-one. -one. In your case, it's a bigger picture, bringing in what kind of opportunities out there, what kind of uh, networking events students should be uh, involved and bringing in the recruitment uh, knowledge and also vacancies as well. So it's really, really useful. Thank you very much. So how can students find these opportunities and events? So students can find out about the opportunities on the careers and the academic skills website. So we have an events page where students can register to attend these events. They'll see in the drop down industry insights and the range of different events that we have with employers. We also promote the 
wider Scottish graduate fairs, which we organise in collaboration with other universities across Scotland. And they will also be posted on the Careers and Academic Skills website. So that's an external event that's run in collaboration across different universities, but it is still open to UWS students and graduates. So they will be advertised on the, the event site. In terms of the opportunities to work with an employer around graduate opportunities or graduate vacancies or graduate programmes or placements or volunteering or, um, opportunities as well, then they can be found on the Target Connect website, which is our UWS vacancy site. And you can access that directly through the, the UWS Careers and Academic Skills website. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Just before we finish, I would love to ask the top three tips you have for students, uh, because you have been successful, obviously, working in different roles in different organisations. So it would be great to hear your tips. Thank you. So my top tips for students and graduates. So the first one is be a lifelong learner. Continue to learn and develop your skills no matter what stage of your career that you're at. So this will demonstrate your commitment to professional development, allowing you to become more flexible and adaptable. Top tip number two, learn to be resilient, whether it's missing out on a graduate programme or not hearing back from a recruiter. Persevere for the right opportunity. Um, overcoming challenges will help you learn and grow. And the third top tip is building your networks. This is very important. Um, whether that be online or in person. So you can gather useful sources of information and advice from your fellow students, lecturers, career staff and employers. Connecting with others both in person and online can help you discover new career possibilities. Fantastic, really, really useful. And I like the networking bit as well. Uh, both you and Nigel mentioned nobody can work on their own. Even if they're working on their own, they would work with somebody or for somebody, you know? So there is a why as well. So it's very important to have good interpersonal skills and people skills and networking. So these are very, very, you know, top, obviously top uh, tips from yourselves. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us as well. Top three tips you have for students. Uh well, I, I guess one of my, my first tips is, and is probably even thinking about my own career here and how it's kind of gone. I haven't always been working in careers. I used to be a scientist and I've kind of kind of had career changes later on in my life. And, and I think one of the things I would always encourage people to think about is to be curious about careers a little bit. It can be quite tempting sometimes just to think we're on a kind of linear path, that there's only certain things we can do with our past experience, with our qualifications. Take Taking some time to explore different opportunities, I think, is, is really beneficial. And, and, and just being open to those opportunities. Don't write them off because it's not necessarily related to your degree or your past experience. Because you'll, you'll find what employers are looking for a lot of the time um, are people with the right skill sets, the right attitudes. Um, and it can fit into their organisation and do the job. So I think be curious about the different things that are out there. There's more possibilities than you might think, and it opens up those opportunities. Uh, I'd also say take time throughout your life to reflect um reflect on what you're doing reflect on your experience because the first step to any career planning any thinking about what am i going to do next is to understand yourself you know what's important to you um what strengths and skills do i have what um interests do i have that can really help you make decisions in the future and the last thing I'm going to do before I hand over to Nigel for his uh, top tips is, is, is use your career service. Uh, you know, it's a free service. You don't often get that in life. Uh, so, you know, we are here to help you. And what you'll get, as Nigel said, there, what you'll get is the ability to work with qualified professionals in their field and people who genuinely want to help you. So please, you know, get in touch with us. Come and speak to us. Nigel, I'll hand over to you okay. now. Okay, so, I mean, once I, the, my sort of top tips, the first top tip, and it really fits in with what Stephen said, is that, you know, you're more than your degree. Um, it's not just about your degree subject. Um, it might be about, you know, think about the different roles you take in life. You know, many of those might give you clues. So it might be that you've got hobbies or interests. It might be that you're a family person and you, and, and you like looking after your family or you like supporting your family, you like spending time with your family. Um, you know, it could be that, um, you know, you enjoy traveling and you enjoy visiting different countries. 
you know, think about these, you know, what, what are you, what, what is the, the, the sum of what you have to offer? And it's, you know, it's unlikely to be just about your degree. You know, it might be that you've done some interesting jobs before you came to study at, at UWS. Build a picture of yourself, which is more than your degree. Second thing is, and again, it fits in with what Stephen's saying, is, is you know, trying things and challenge, challenging yourself outside your comfort zone sometimes, because that's where you learn, you know, often, and it's where you get confidence as well, by pushing yourself beyond your boundaries. C certainly, if you're going to progress in a graduate career later on, you're going to be outside your comfort zone at times. Um, so now's a good, uh, you know, chance at university to, you know, to take on different roles or to try different things, a bit less risky than when, than when it's actually in a job. And lastly, I would say is, you know, start networking now. Start thinking about careers in terms of networks, networks that you can develop um, and do it sort of before you need to do it so that you can start making those connections and doing favours for people, making you know, connections with people before you're actually having to ask them for favours. So that's my three top tips. Fantastic. How valuable. Uh, so maybe I'll add one or two as well. So my first one would be, um, if you don't ask, you don't get. So if you don't ask to meet us, you don't know all the different opportunities, ways we can help you as well. And that applies to everything you're doing. And also the second one would be don't take no for an answer. People might say no today, but they might say yes tomorrow. Always leave a professional reputation, build a good network and move on. And last one would be use your career service. We are here waiting for you to speak to you, to help you to be successful in your next steps. So thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing our students. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, ask, you know, always ask, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. I was actually speaking to a student yesterday who, who'd had an interview recently that didn't go very well. And it kind of left a bad taste in their mouth and they, they didn't really want to ask for feedback. And I said, no, that, that's the exact time that you must ask for feedback. That's the time. If you don't ask for that feedback, nobody's going to give you that feedback. So, you know, and again, that's about going outside your comfort zone. So, yeah, there's lots of examples like that. I, I was just going to add, actually, um, what we might often see is the question of when when should I go and see the career service? And often there's, we've seen evidence from some surveys and so on that often a student won't come and speak to the career service or come along to an event or get engaged in any way with the career service because they don't feel they're ready. They don't feel that they know what they want to do. So we are not for them. That's, that's, that's not the case at all. We will work with students whether you have absolutely no idea what you want to do. And actually, I would say that's the absolute benefit of working in the career service because our experienced careers advisors will be able to work with you to, to help you develop ideas about what you want to do. Um, all the way through to people who really know what they want to do and are just looking to move on to get that next step to, to secure a job. We can help at all stages. So please, it doesn't matter what stage of your career thinking you're at. We will be able to offer something for you there. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It has been a very valuable episode, I would say, because sometimes students, we think only we have one career idea and we are studying for it but without realizing there are so many different opportunities. So I'd like to thank you again for joining today and um, we'll uh, see you next time. And thank you for listening and join us next time and subscribe to our podcast. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, thank you Anna. very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Anna. Bye, everyone. You have been listening to the UWS Careers Cafe, the podcast from UWS Careers Team with hosts Una Ramsey and Nigel Royal, where we talk about everything related to student and graduate careers. If you have enjoyed listening to this episode, please check out the others in the series. Also, you can follow the link in the description to our website, where you will find an amazing array of career resources to help you forge your path to a rewarding career.